Hello guys and boys, gals. Today I'm feeling great. Today is the day when I record another toasting of the arts. I just decided this morning that I'm gonna do it. Hell yeah! But first, fuck this background, dude. This is... Let's not keep this. Today in the morning, I was drinking my coffee. I was feeling a little something. I ended up going to the YouTube creators app and I looked at YouTube comments for no reason. And the first thing I saw was somebody telling me that this guy doesn't even know how to pronounce his own name. And it pissed me the fuck off. I do know how to pronounce my own name. Do you guys know PewDiePie? Do you guys know the reason why people don't say PewDiePie? I draw landscapes, but can they get roasted? Hey man, I'm new to digital art, and for the past year and a half, I've been mainly drawing landscapes on my iPad. I'd like your opinion about this artwork that I have spent over an hour. Here's my Instagram for the rest of my artworks, at sad drawings. Sad. Okay, that's pretty cool, like, it's a little bit... <laughs> Dude, I don't know, like, it's very cool, like, at first sight, it's like, you look at it, they're like, oh, ha, huh, huh, that's, what a beautiful scene. Got a nice uh, selection of colors going on, a nice reflection, but then the more you look at it, the more underwhelming it gets. It's very same-y everywhere. I, need, I think what this piece needs is a little bit more variation of textures and colors, so it doesn't, like, a few basic colors covering the entire image, like, for example, this grass area down here it's just plain grass I'd say like it's it's the same from all the way from to the right to the left same with the water same here same here nothing really changes and that's what what I want to see in this piece like you did this one batch of birds up here but that's as far as excitement goes on this image to illustrate my point about that flipping the grass I would just maybe grab a brush and give this some variety put some color variation into here let's go like yellowish so it breaks the monochrome of this area and it will be very cool you know oh shit i'm covering up the sad drawings god i'm such a dick today i'm sorry another thing about this is that it's like a straight ass line same here i mean like yeah it's it's understandable here because it's like supposed to be close to the horizon i think or is it like the colors don't imply that it's close to the horizon it actually looks like it's not that far away so maybe it shouldn't be a straight line there either but they'll get to that in a bit i'll just work on this grass area first maybe i'll bring it down a little bit on some areas maybe it'll go like this i would also make this area be affected by the sky light and actually i think this whole picture could use like a filter of orangish pinkish yellowish color the coming down from the sky i think that would make the atmosphere a lot more readable something like this yeah, now the sky is very saturated, so maybe I can just mask that down real quick. So it affects only the mountains and the grass. Yeah, I would also brighten these mountains a little bit from the top areas where they're facing upwards a little bit more. So we we'll bring in some of that sky color there for that spiciness. Very nice, niceiness, spiciness. Maybe I would go a little bit brighter on that for the further back they go to bring in some good old atmospheric perspective that can very easily be abused for scenarios like this as long as it's darker than the sky it will be good by the way guys if you disagree with anything that i say feel free to call me out on it i think that makes this series more entertaining i think one more thing that i would go for is i would not make the water so clear i would give the water some surface texture so basically i would uh, do like a bit of air perspective here as well i'm using a one edge brush for this for that instant effect all right so i'm just gonna grab some of this color here and go paint some ripply stuff over these mountain reflections maybe i would put in some of that yellow over here where it's supposed to appear on the reflection i don't know why it's like it's kind of dark though when i look at this yellow on the color picker it's like kind of down here maybe you should go up up like this to make it pop more i'm just gonna use some super soft brush yeah i like that that's cool right that also creates some atmosphere i'll also put in some dark ripples on around the reflection areas because the reflection kind of gets scattered around in the ripples a little bit it's not doesn't create the perfectly 100% same reflection as what you see up there. This is going from being very close to us to go to being very far away from us. So to convey that you can use the brightnesses. 
Okay, like when I look at this in values, I think that the, the thing that throws people off, like the, that kills the illusion of distance in this is the fact that the mountains are like way darker than the grass here. Because you, the further back you go, the less dark areas you will see, basically, it will start turning into the color of the sky. So, 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 so I will maybe try to use some blending modes to fix this. Maybe I'll grab a lighten. And basically what lighten does, it puts color over only into areas that are darker than your brush color, which is like right here for me. Now the value structure is very flat. So let's try to bring in some more darkness to the closer areas to us. Okay, that is a little, a little, little better. Not too much, just a little. I think I can go with the kind of a edge light over here. I think this is like an implied sunset. So the strongest light is coming from over there. And since these are like between us and the light source, we can see the light hitting the edges of the, gr the grass. Okay, so I think I've illustrated my main ideas. So before and after, before and after, basically, all I did was work with the contrast a little bit, made the appropriate contrast in appropriate places and took into account the distance of objects in the piece. That's usually what I do end up doing <laughs> in the people's paintings. Toast is popped art. Popped art. Haha. -ha. I, I hope, hope that popped pop art, art pun, pun wasn't, wasn't too lame. lame. Here's, Here's my, my latest, latest art. art. I have I never done, done a 3D environment background, background before. before. Usually my characters are floating in space or something. Uh, all right. Well, it's milky. Yeah, like it's cool. I do like the colors a lot, very bright in the pastel. I think I'm just gonna redraw the background with proper perspective, I guess. It appears as if we are kind of up somewhere looking down on the girl. Let me just do a big ol' cut out here. Let's time lapse this. If you're gonna make an image with a background, I feel like you should also have a little bit of room to show off the background. I feel like, yeah, you made this character drawing and then they were like, you said that you don't do backgrounds very often, right? And then they were like, okay, I'll try making a background as well. I'll just use the space that I have and put shit in there. But what you can do is actually make room for the background. The curl appears to be like running or moving somewhere. So maybe we could show where she is moving by putting a little bit of more space back there. All right, let's put the horizon down first, like in the middle of the piece, basically. She should be in like a sidewalk or something, right? I can see why you struggle with this because like I can't figure out what angle this should be in either. Like if I wanna decide where the ground plane is I'm gonna follow like this angle of the foot which appears to be a something like this if I'm gonna turn it into a cube we're looking down at it from above like far above if I get perspective like this from this foot then logically if she's walking down a sidewalk or something we should be seeing it something like this I guess but that doesn't work at, at all with the rest of the body like because if the perspective of the foot was a little different if we weren't looking so far down on it if we were seeing it from the front more than from above then like we could do more with the background it would look more natural so yeah like I'm gonna try to just draw a new foot real quick <laughs> all right so let's <laughs> let's draw some feet shall we That's actually not bad for a first try at doing a background, like for real. There is perspective, like that's great. Nice, I'm just gonna try to like make it a little bit more accurate, I guess. Like it doesn't even need to be because it's like a very unrealistic looking character, but they do have like pretty realistic backgrounds in anime. So <laughs> the perspective of the background should be actually quite distorted to make sense with this kind of foreshortening. Or I should maybe just not make the milk be so close to us. Like I should just take this milk here and make it a little smaller. If I wanna make it work with this perspective, it cannot be that large because that implies that it's closer to the camera than this down here. 
so basically the arm would be like super long here's the head here's the body and here would be the arm and here would be the milk yeah a lot of advanced concepts for a simple anime drawing this is why real anime art is actually very complex because professional anime artists have actually a good understanding of fundamentals and they take all of these things into account it doesn't look like it because it looks very simple on the surface but it has usually some deep knowledge behind it fuck dude now i feel like the composition is weird let me just adjust the cropping this is the crop tool by the way somebody asked me on the last episode like what do you use to extend the image like that and it's just a crop tool i just crop the image to be bigger <laughs> yeah, so basically i'm just using the rule of thirds as a rule here what i'm thinking of is this first vertical line and the second vertical line i want to place like a, the most important element of the background in this intersection let's make it a milk shop and the girl is exiting from that place and she's really happy does looks like she's not coming out from there because this plant is covering up the door let's just put this plant over here on the side next to the entrance maybe another one over here on this side i want to draw like a little cow face symbol up here <laughs> should i color this or have i illustrated what i need to say with this like for good measure i could color this yeah i'm just texturizing the ground here following those perspective lines i'm just creating lines here that's all i mean by texture <laughs> just the lines i did end up with a little bit of a different image it looks like she's actually in there a little bit more but yeah i guess that's actually what i did want to show so toasty roasty hi shall love your stuff i'm 18 and this is a drawing of my oc in front of a cafe I'm in a desperate need of an honest critique, so please go all out and roast every detail if you want to. Nice, I like that shit. That's very cool. What what do you actually want critique on? Like this is exactly what I was talking about in the previous piece. Like this is also like kind of an anime piece, but the background there serves a purpose. It actually shows something about the character. Like it gives the piece some narrative. Like it doesn't even like totally render it out. They still kept it like sort of abstract to a degree but you can still see just about enough to know what's happening here the lighting seems to be coming in from the left you can see that it's kind of like an end of the day kind of scene the sun is going down it's you can tell the time of day you can tell the location you can tell something about the character by the character's style and aesthetic like overall it's just a very nice piece like i really like it i don't even know what i would change about this probably not a lot because it already works very well for what it is and what it's trying to be but i can give it a shot i can nitpick on this maybe like for real dude i i actually really like this piece like like how i did the shadows of the foliage on the character and the background combined with the light rays on the character's side it really tells us that the sun is going down and the shadows are getting longer and i guess the one thing the one thing that i would would maybe change about this is the color that the background fades into it's like full-on gray it doesn't feel like and it's a gray piece like it doesn't emit feelings of like dullness gray is a color that emits feeling of nothing <laughs> It's the most emotionless color out there. I think it would work a little better if, if the gray was a bigger contrast to like very vivid popping colors, but the colors don't appear to be all that saturated. Like they are in some areas, but mo they're more on the muted side of things, I would say. I don't even have like a set final image in my mind. I just trying to see what would look better than just having it plain gray in the back there i think that this yellowish tone actually works quite nicely this a little bit like lime greenish very desaturated lime lime green would look cool here i want the color that wouldn't like steal the show or anything it would just be there it still feels kind of gray but it isn't like pure gray like it still has some color in it so that's like the only thing i would change about this so if you guys want to find this artist you can use this name to find them i suppose so yeah good nice job i give this piece a 9.5 out of 10. you knew exactly how much to leave out and that's exactly what makes for a great artist to simplify things. It may come as a surprise to some of you, 
but I record these videos in multiple parts most of the time. It has been a couple days since the last part and in the meantime I got sick so I sound a little different. Your traditional drawing. Hey, I'm Sarah in 15. I rewatched your traditional art video and you said the drawing was unsavable. Talking about one old video I made. Sounded like a challenge to my 1am brain so here you go. I just wanted you to look at the drawing, I don't know. So here is the original image that I did. When I look at it now, it's I, I like the legs, like that part looks fine to me, but then you move up to the sweater and it's like, please remove it. And also the face is, I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about the face, but let's see what they did with it. Okay, okay, like I am kind of enjoying what I'm seeing. It's uh, It's got the very airbrushy and uh, inky vibe now, I would say. But what exactly am I supposed to critique here? Am I supposed to critique your critique of my drawing? I just want you to look at the drawing. Okay, well, I have an idea. I'm gonna try to do something different. I'm gonna take my own original version of this image and I'm gonna try to overpaint that to some degree. Should I render it out more or should I not? That's a good question. Where is the light source? First of all, let's determine that. Currently, from what I can tell, it's it's like something like this. These parts are left in shadow, these side parts. So I'm just gonna do this. Then I'm gonna lower the opacity so I see what's under there. I'm just gonna redraw everything. Okay, so let's try to make these clothing folds look sensical, sense making sensical to some effing degree. Okay, so it's like it's coming down from here, then it stops over here. It starts folding up the in the other direction or something it's all about physics and the underlying anatomy all right so this is a kind of a bulky sweater right so it kind of starts getting into these compressed folds down here and then on the other side we can kind of repeat the same process it starts out with these long vertical folds because it's just drooping down because nothing is under it. And then it just starts wrapping around itself like this more and more. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Clothing folds are difficult, but I've studied them so much that I am starting to get the basic understanding of how they work. Okay, now for the shading, let's just try to follow this big ol' motherfucker up here. Okay, well, this part I cannot explain. All I'm doing here is trying to imagine what the three-dimensional form of the uh, thing looks like, the clothing, and I'm just basing my shading off of that and there's no other explanation to it. I can't teach you shading, I can't teach you guys anatomy, that's a very complex subject. A lot of people message me saying like, yeah, my anatomy's off, can you please critique my anatomy, please? Of course, saying please is a good thing. Oh my God, oh my God, this still looks awful. Holy shit. No, this is not self-deprecation or whatever you guys may think. This is just, well, I don't know, maybe it is. <laughs> but like, fuck, I, it's not what I intended to do. Like I was gonna fix it, not just make another bad version of this. I think it would get very dark over here already. Most of this would be in shadow. Damn, clothing is difficult. I'll give you that, especially from imagination. Even after studying this subject matter for I don't know how much, it's still very challenging to get to look right. I'm satisfied with these areas, but not this and this area. Okay, it's now looks decent. It looks like it has actual form now, kind of. For the sake of the length of the video, I'm gonna ignore whatever this shit down here is, but like it is better now than this. Like the improvement is there. Uh, I just, oh, wait a sec. Holy shit, dude. Oh my God, I can just erase this because it's actually supposed to be covered by this handle. God damn, dude. Holy shit. Holy smokes. This is awesome. This is epic. This just saved my ass so hard. Toasting of the art. Hey man, could you give me some advice on the grass and the leaves? They look like weed, Lamayo. Also, I think the lighting is off, but I'm not too sure. Anything you have to say would be appreciated. 
I'm 16, by the way, sent from my iPad. Okay, it's a vectory kind of image. It looks vectory, but at first sight, but when I look at the background, it don't anymore. Grass brushes used here and some leaf brushes. Oh, they do look like weed a little bit, huh? It makes me go le ruffle. What I would suggest you to do with the grass and leaves, like they do look like the problem area in this image because they differentiate so much from the rest of the image in terms of style. Like you've got this very clean vectory shit going on here in the foreground it looks decent it looks nice but then you just look at leaves and it's like it's obvious you use some kind of brush that just scatters those leaves around so how do you draw leaves well if you want to draw leaves in the same vectory style you can just start out by drawing some big old masses so for instance if i would want to draw this tree over here i would grab a brush and i would just go over it i would just create some kind of mass at first like yeah this looks like garbage excuse me but i'm just trying to demonstrate what i mean so i would just create some random fucking masses like this i'm going over the horse's head but i'll fix that in a moment once you have those shapes down you wouldn't even have to render out the relief details are only really necessary in areas where the surface comes in contact most intimately with a light source you don't really have a set light source in this image it's a very ambient light kind of scenario but if that's the case, then the light is coming from straight up, I guess. Then the texture of the leaves would appear on the top parts. You could just draw a bunch of like single weed leaves up here. And that's the only part where you would really have to draw individual shit out by hand. An easy way to draw leaves with the default brush is to just start out big and then go lower on the pressure and create like quick strokes like this. Just make sure you have the minimum diameter down here. But if you repeat that enough, like you could create some kind of vectory looking leaves just like that. You can apply exactly the same principles on the grass. I don't know what you what you were thinking when you did those long shadows on the trees though that doesn't make any sense considering the lighting scenario you have going on here and you also got this damn light source like i'm not sure what that even was like like this big old light ray coming in from the top split in the image into two like i don't really understand why that's there like yeah maybe i'll just try to like make this a little bit more consistent like maybe i'll try to put more of this shit around this image quick leaves this is how you do quick leaves three colors necessary a mid-tone a shadow and a highlight and it doesn't even have to be like perfect and just make it like as like random dots like this that also works because there's you need to do this quickly right you don't want to spend ages doing this crap so you can just kind of go at it in a quick pace like this and to make the transitions look nicer you can just grab some of that mid-tone and go over some of the shadows and some of the highlights with that as well this way it also covers up more of the background so we get it uh, kind of leaves the impression that leaves get it leaves the impression <laughs> it leaves the impression that there's a thicker layer of leaves here so it, if you want to make this look like a forest i would assume it's supposed to be like a forest of some kind it also enhances that feeling a little bit more so i'm just gonna create more of these masses around these branches you've got going on here I'm literally just doing it the same way I created the leaves. And anyway, it doesn't even have to be the same color everywhere. If you want to go, if you go like more in, into the distance, for instance, like it might go even lighter and maybe bluer to go along with what you have over here. This transition from this grass color to the horizon. I just realized they covered up the castle. I think I should just leave an opening here in this part because that way the castle will still be visible. And we can just drop more and more detail till the further back we go in distance so you don't even really have to draw out all those individual leaves on those background trees but yeah this is how i'd approach it when I look at this like you use those leaf brushes right but you can actually do the same thing that i demonstrated with the leaf brushes the only thing is you just need to have like these masses blocked out before you go in with the leaf brushes you can just define these transition areas the transition from light to dark and from 
light to extra light. I mean, from medium to dark and medium to light, you can define those transitions with the leaf brush. I mean, that would work. But yeah, this is this is basically what I do with this pick. Criticize me for a trash art, shall I'm 23. This is a commission piece, so please try to only roast the art itself. It's my most recent finished art piece, and I'd love to know how can I take it to the next level, like composition, contrast, colors, and more. Also, if you see any issues with the anatomy, roast! That's a long email, that's not that long. If you see any issues with the anatomy, roast. Like, anatomy is pretty cool, I like the way you rendered the fingers. I'm not gonna talk about the anatomy because that is way too complex of a subject for me to critique. You have the sunlight coming in from up here, right? So the first thing I would do probably is I would create the, like a very strong edge light on the character. Basically, I think you already kind of, that's what you had in mind with this up here, but it's like not big of a contrast at all when you look at the color wheel it's like barely goes up in brightness so you should play that up like a ton this is one of those scenarios where it would almost be acceptable uh, acceptable to go full on white because our camera or our eye is exposed to the shadow area of this character like this whole character is actually in shadow in contrast to the sunlight so we could just entirely blow out this light on the edges here and it would make sense so yeah basically it's kind of acts as a rim light right now like a backlight so only areas that are starting to turn back get hit and that shit could even actually have a glow around it because it's so bright and yeah you've got this i think you are somebody who knows usually how to do cell shading kind of shading and this time you were going for like a blended look you basically blocked in the shadow areas as one like tone and then you just blended it with a blending tool of some kind uh but i think like you can take that a little bit further because i think that this could go darker in some areas like for instance this neck area we could easily go darker in here so this neck area would be pretty damn dark because it's all being left in shadow because there's the thick hair around it which doesn't allow any kind of light to get access to it it's basically how ambient lighting works basically from what i can see you already know how all of these light sources work because i see that you have done some reflected lighting here like it's quite weak but it's there like over here it's reflected light from this golden thing and also over here and like these highlights are also caused by sunlight reflected from the ground yeah you just need to like push it a little further to give it that tangible lighting effect put in a little bit more contrast I don't know if the reason you didn't do so is because of a lack of anatomy knowledge or something because you did ask for advice in anatomy, but who knows, mate, who knows? So basically my advice for you is don't call the piece finished after the first like shading passes. You can still go a long way from that point on. You have this like big area of like a sh of shade here, but it's all just one flat color. You should have a little bit more something going on there because it takes up like a lot of space on the image and you want to have that space have something in it other than just flat color. I mean, like I think you very much have the capability to do that. So I think I've illustrated my point here. I think this is actually pretty fun. I'm gonna try to like take this picture a little bit further and then I'll I'll call it a day with this one. I do enjoy the pose you went with and it creates a very cool vibe actually. It's cool. I enjoy this piece. So nice. The character does take up most of the space in the composition and that's why I think you should have a little bit more details in it. Usually I would crop the image in a way that the head would be like a little bit closer to the center of the piece or something but in this case I think that it very much suits the nature of the character having his head be all the way up there because it's supposed to be like a kind of a god kind of character with a lot of power he's so big that he barely even fits in the frame and that all enhances that very well okay yeah like i think i'm pretty much done here i didn't actually 
change too much. I just inc in improved the rendering a little bit. And I think that's what you can do with this piece. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it, guys. And uh, if you want to submit, submission email is over here. Send your shit to this email address. Do not send it to my darn business email. Please. It's only for business inquiries like Huion tablet reviews and all that other mainstream shit like Skillshare and uh, what like uh, Dollar Shave Club, NordVPN, all that good jazz. So yeah, enjoy, enjoy the outro, I guess. Oh shit, actually the curves look kind of cool here. Pushing the contrast up on this piece looks pretty cool actually. That's cool, man. I like that. I like that. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm gonna go now. Bye, guys.